So the Mavericks beat the Clippers in Dallas. DeAndre Jordan had nine points, 11 rebounds against his almost team. Chandler Parsons had this to say on ESPN.com on DeAndre's return. Quote, he's not a priority to us, and by the looks of their team, he's not to them either. Ouch. Shots fired, Stephen A. What was your takeaway from this game? Well, my takeaway is on the positive side for the Dallas Mavericks. I can't say enough about Dirk Nowitzki. He's a, fu Dirk Nowitzki, he's a future Hall of Famer. Uh, he was absolutely spectacular last night, finishing with 31 and 11, hitting big shots, outplaying Blake Griffin, which, by the way, surprised me, considering the way that Blake Griffin has been playing. I definitely expected more from him last night. It's beautiful to see Wesley Matthews out there. Skip, I've always been a fan of this guy. I loved him when he was playing in Portland with Damian Lillard. The minute he went down, you know, I knew that Portland had no shot the rest of the season because he's got an iron will like Coach Rick Carlisle continuously says he's not scared of anything he always wants to fight he goes out there he can't just score he defends as well and he was harassing Chris Paul all night long helping to limit him to two what is it two for 11 shooting just 11 points for Chris Paul obviously I expected better from him as well as well as is Blake Griffin DeAndre Jordan when you look at the night that he had um it's not surprising. I mean, what did he have here? He had nine points. He had 11 rebounds. I'm surprised he had just one block, but Dallas shoots a lot of perimeter shots. But once again, he only played 27 minutes or so. Why, Skip? Because they kept fouling him. And you go three for nine from the free throw line. That's 33%, which is around what he shoots for the season because he came in the game shooting at 34%. This is what is holding the Clippers back. Because when DeAndre Jordan is on the floor, both offensively and defensively, he is a force to be reckoned with. If the brother could just hit free throws, it would change everything for the Los Angeles Clippers. So when we think about what Chandler Parsons had to say, he's right on the money. Sure, it was a dig. Uh, and sure, it, listen, Mark Cuban and Dallas Mavericks, eventually you got to let it go. But this was his first time in Dallas since, re since reneging on his deal to, to go there. So we understand that. But the point is, is that at the end of the day, you know, he's not a priority for the Clippers. Chandler Parsons sat there and he's right. Doesn't seem to be a priority offensively. Defensively, he obviously does. But offensively, he is not. Why? Because you got to be able to make free throws. You got to be able to close. Because when you can't do that, they just get to foul you and disrupt the flow and the rhythm offensively of the rest of your team. And if you're Doc Rivers... And the Clippers, you can't afford to let him do that. So that's the situation. It is what it is. Dallas is 4-4. Four and four. Amazingly, I'm shocked by that because of the personnel they don't have. But nevertheless, the Clippers, to me, what I learned from this is that Rick Carlisle, once again, can still coach his butt off. Dirk Nowitzki's a star. Wesley Matthews is a stud if he can stay healthy. And the Clippers, however, are a very good team who will not be great unless they find a way to offset DeAndre Jordan's free throw shooting. Mm. I hear what you're saying, but I'm just going on emotions. I watched this whole game, and I loved every last drop of it for the sake of the Maverick fans. I think they all had a great time at this game. And I can relate to Maverick fans because, if you remember, I covered this franchise from its inception for its first 18 years of existence. So I think I know their heartbeat and their psyches. They're not like, let's say, Philly fans who are going to boo Santa Claus. They're not like that. They're not mean-spirited. They're not nasty to me. I, I guess you could. There, there might be one or two somewhere, but in general, they just like to go scream and yell for their Dallas Mavericks. And last night, that they they weren't. I, I didn't think. I don't think anybody threw anything. I didn't hear anything about anything getting thrown. So it was just they just booed. DeAndre Jordan upon his return and <laughs> what I loved about it was as I said on the show yesterday that they could boo him the most when he was standing by himself at the free throw line and and it was just a joy to watch him miss six out of his nine free throws because it just brought the house down it was fun and and again he he spurned them he burned them and they got a small measure of revenge last night. Just, just, a, just a little slice of early, early season justice. That's, that's all it was. It doesn't amount to a whole lot. I wish Rick Carlisle had fouled him more, to your point, because 
He's a disaster at the free throw line. He's shooting 34% for the year. He was 33% last night. And I, I wanted, to, as I said yesterday, I wanted to see him shoot 29 free throws. I thought Rick kind of take the, took the high road there because down the stretch, especially toward the two minute mark, you could have put him on the line even more than they did. They did some, he made a couple late, but three out of nine. So my, my point is that it, it was a fun game to watch for the Maverick fans. They, they got even for the year, four and four. Dirk had a big night. He had five out of six threes, as you point out. Last one might have been a little lucky. I don't think he called glass on it, but it went in. It was their night. So good for Maverick fans. You, you, you got to take it out on a guy. And Stephen A., you, you make the point he's a good guy. I, I think DeAndre's, if, if I can, he, he's more lover than fighter. I think he's like good-hearted guy. He, a lot of guys would, would get their mad on and go back into Dallas like they're on a mission to, to put, you know, shut these fans up. He, was, he seemed pretty intimidated, so he goes out well, early. Wait a second, we got the picture of him. Yeah, he's signing autographs. autographs. There he is. So he goes, that was smart, shrewd yeah. operator. You go out, you sign autographs, good for you. You butter him up a little bit. And then, you know, he, he said he was prepared for the worst and it wasn't all that bad. Because Maverick fans aren't all that bad. They're just gonna boo you mostly when you touch the ball, which is rare, and especially when you're at the free throw line. And then to cap it off, the Chandler Parsons dig is subtle, but brilliant to me. Not a priority to us, not a priority apparently mm -hmm. to the Clippers because he took only five shots and I'm looking at the first nine players who played for the, the Clippers and of those nine, he took the fewest shots. Well, that's we know that. He's not going to be a priority and Dallas, their whole pitch was, we're would. going to build around you. We're going to make you a star here. So good, good for the Dallas Mavericks. Well, it was good for them, but let's be clear about something. I mean, like, like you said, he is a good guy, Skip. He really, really is. But I think that he would have went out there with that dog in him to go after them. What happens is, is that you're going to get humbled when somebody keeps attacking your weakness. Or your weakness. The Dallas Mavericks were letting them know you're going to get but so many shots because we're going to be inclined to foul you a lot. Why? Because we know you can't hit free throws. And so when you recognize that as an impediment, particularly when you're in those hostile confines and you clearly don't have the confidence that you need to have in order to hit free throws because that's your Achilles heel, then it's going to be problematic for you. And it's just that simple. And so that's what it comes down to. It's not so much that he didn't want to go out there and play lights out. But in the end, if I know you can jump out of the gym, you can dunk on anybody, you can block shots, you can rebound, you can defend, but the thing I'm focused on is fouling you so I can send you to the free throw line, and that's the one Achilles heel that you can't appear to overcome. It'll humble anybody. When somebody continuously goes about the business of attacking not just your weakness, but somebody something you know to be your weakness. And this is why DeAndre Jordan, has to sit up there and get free throws. I'm on the record, Skip. Let me be very, very clear. I believe DeAndre Jordan's free throw shooting will cost the Clippers a championship. I think that if DeAndre Jordan, if a miracle happened and DeAndre Jordan could be left on the floor for 38 to 40 minutes a night, that DeAndre Jordan could hit 75 to 80% of his free throws, I believe the Clippers would win the championship. But he's not going to do that. And that's why they can't even come out of the West because they got to play without him when it matters most or depend on his free throw shooting because you're going to send him to the free throw line. And he just can't deliver in that regard. Everything else about him, I find to be great. Okay, well, time in terms out. Of his, it, are you yeah, saying yeah, that, that the Clippers should have left him in Dallas? Because that's what you're suggesting. No. no, 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 no. I'm saying that you have to find a supplementary piece to put in when money time arrives and be okay without him. I think that it's almost, it's, 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 it's not almost, but it's similar to what I say. You know when we're talking about some of the greatest closers in history, guys that you have in, two, in the last two minutes, and you would say, well, not LeBron, and I'd tell you, yeah, but I want LeBron the other 46 minutes. Sure. You know, it's sort of, it's, it's sort of akin to okay. that. Okay, but they I do, want they DeAndre do that. Jordan on they, my squad. They, they subbed for him huh? last night late. You know, yeah, but, but it's end. not good enough. No, I'm saying it's not good enough. Yeah. Whatever they do to sub for him, it, it it's too much of a loss when he is off the floor because he's so formidable defensively. You just need him out there. He neutralizes a lot of things that other people want to do. There's no excuse in the world why the Clippers should be 5-3 and three right now. Yeah. They're too good for this. But when you can foul them, what do you want? 
Yeah, well, there's one coach who will put him on the line from start to finish, and that's Coach Popovich. Although I must tell you, the Clippers right. did beat my Spurs in seven games, so they overcame that yeah. last year. But that was because of the greatness of Chris Paul and Blake Griffin. Yep. All right. It was, it was a lot of things, but I'll leave it at that. <laughs> okay, let's yeah. let's leave it there. In this next game, there will be serious booing when the New England Patriots head to New York. JPP says he will get to Tom Brady on Sunday, but did the pass rusher 